Hello, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to today's webinar on full relay testing webinar, which is a three hours demonstration. Uh, today's speaker is Mr. Ali Hussain, who is an application engineer at Megar Middle East. I'll be your moderator for this session. My name is Sousan Adnan, and I am the marketing manager for Mega, Mega Middle East. So before handing the mic over to Mr. Ali, I would like to uh, highlight a few things. Uh, if you have any technical issues within um, uh, using WebEx, please feel free to ask me at any time. And if you have any questions during the sessions, please feel free to put them uh, in the Q&A section you can find on your right hand side. Also, I uh, would like to. I will share with you the social media accounts where you can follow us um, to receive all new updates about webinars and prod product updates. Um, so mm -hmm. there is also a small survey at the end of this webinar. Um, if you have any comments and if you want to request any demos or quotations, you can feel, feel free just to um, fill it up. So I will be handing out the mic to Mr. Ali Hussain. Mr. Ali Hussain, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sosan, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Welcome. And uh, I would say good morning, good afternoon, good evening for wherever you are. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize about the little delay we have at the beginning. Uh, we were just setting up the camera. Uh, as always, our session today will be mainly a practical session. It's more of, I would say, a mini training uh, about relay uh, testing. I know I call it the full relay testing, uh, but we try to get as much as possible uh, with the time being that we have. So we have a packed agenda for today's session. Uh, I'll start by giving a quick introduction about uh, protection, uh, what the fundamentals of uh, protection, and then uh, fundamentals about the protection testing, what we are doing and how we can say this is pass or this is failed, basically. Uh, I'll explore some of the connections that you might need to do. This is a very simple thing, but just showing them in uh, uh, general for single phase test kits and uh, three phase test kits, and maybe talk about a little bit differences about here and there. Uh, then we will do uh, secondary injection uh, testing according to uh, uh, requirement and what's the best practices. Uh, when testing uh, using a secondary injection test kit. Mm. We'll talk about some uh, non-directional overcurrent protection testing, uh, how we do the normal test, pickup, timing, uh, what some kind of trips, uh, tips and tricks that you can use to make the test go smoother or easier, and how us MIGR can help you uh, achieve that. And then we will talk about directional overcurrent, which is something uh, might be used a little bit more advanced uh, than normal overcurrent, what the kind of tests that we have for it. Uh, I'll talk about some fundamentals about directional overcurrent, how we uh, select the polarization angles, the polarization voltage, how we can set them up in our uh, test equipment and how can we uh, test them. Uh, and last but not least, we'll talk about the breaker failure. Uh, as a, a function. Uh, these uh, protection uh, functions that I have selected for this training will considered as an introduction to, I would say, medium voltage or distribution uh, uh, protection system, which is a majority and I feel are, are beneficial for uh, many, many people. For any advanced uh, protection for transmission, uh, I would say, that we might uh, do uh, on a later stage on a different webinars. If you would like to see something like that, please leave that in the chat section or in the feedback and uh, we'll definitely consider uh, doing something like this in the future. So uh, one thing I would like to highlight before we starting, questions, questions, questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them anytime. 
uh, we'll have three breaks after each, I would say, uh, one hour or maybe 45 minutes, we'll have a break uh, to uh, start fresh again with the next session. Uh, and also during that break, we'll try to answer uh, any questions that you might have uh, uh, during the session. So without further ado, we will start right now. I got uh, with me uh, my colleague Ali Azam uh, joining me uh, 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 as well in this uh, webinar at later stage. So we'll, we'll start uh, first by talking about, I would say, one of the most fundamental thing about the protection systems. When we talk about the protection system, one of the most fundamental, I would say, criteria that we all uh, need to have in a protection system and why all this testing, why all these settings, why all these uh, calculation is done is for these criteria. Uh, the first criteria is I, would, I want a, a protection system that is uh, reliable. I can depend on when I need it. So if I have my protection sit, uh, uh, system been installed like 10 years ago and the fault only happened today, I need it to act same as it was uh, installed and commissioned 10 years ago. So I want to be able to depend on it when I need it. That's at night, at, at storms, at, at, at system stability issues, at anything, my protection system needs to be reliable. And also at the same time, it needs to be secure, meaning that it will not operate when it's not needed. Uh, it will not, uh, what we call, mal-operate. Uh, I need my system or my protection system uh, uh, and not issuing an or, or operation uh, during non-faulty or when there is uh, uh, no problem with my, uh, uh, I would say, uh, power system. Another criteria that I have is selectivity. Selectivity, it's uh, the criteria that you can't always have, and sometimes you have to compromise on another criteria to get it. It is to isolate only and only the faulty uh, part uh, uh, as much as possible. I don't want to uh, turn off all my uh, power system parts. I only want to turn off uh, or isolate the faulty ones. Uh, and this uh, selectivity, that's why we have a lot of setting related to timing, related to uh, 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 pickup currents or uh, zones or something like that, just to achieve this uh, uh, selectivity. And thirdly, I have uh, sensitivity. Uh, sensitivity, it means that it's able to uh, sense any smaller faults that it might not be a huge problem at first when they uh, uh, start, but they could develop uh, there, it should be able to sense them and operate uh, according to these uh, uh, small faulty uh, conditions. And last is a speed. I want it to operate or trip as fast as possible. Uh, having the speed and selectivity, sometimes you have to uh, compromise one for the other. Uh, we're talking about the protection systems, but there are some, I would say, protection principles like uh, differential protection uh, that can have a both a full 100% selectivity and at the same time can have the shortest or I'd say instantaneous uh, operation at time, uh, 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 both at the same time, having these two criteria in differential uh, protection. So these criteria are the criteria that when I want to design uh, a protection system, I will be considering always uh, trying to achieve all of them if possible with the, I would say, principle I'm using for protection and with the capabilities uh, and uh, I would say uh, cost, minimize cost uh, as possible uh, available to me. So the first protection principle uh, that uh, most people, I would say, uh, deal with, or most protection circuits are dealing with is overcurrent protection. And overcurrent protection, it is the most, I would say, basic and simple. 
and uh, it's the cheapest and easiest to apply uh, uh, an over current protection. Uh, it's very simple. Whenever the current, depending on which phase, or which uh, loop you are measuring, exceed a set value or a certain limit that you put, uh, an operation of that uh, 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 protection will start. This operation could be time delayed to achieve coordination or selectivity, or could be instantaneous to achieve, I would say, speed. This really depends on the uh, type of power system uh, that you have. Now, uh, that uh, overcurrent uh, can also be enhanced with the addition of directional elements. Uh, you can add a directional element to the overcurrent to see if the fault is uh, in the forward direction or in the reverse uh, uh, direction. This gives you a uh, better selectivity and also uh, in, in many cases, uh, a better speed as well. So directional overcurrent, since it's the most applied and uh, what we are going to mainly talk about, we'll talk a little bit uh, about it from, I would say, selectivity and time setting. If, for example, I have an, uh, an, an, a system like this where I have uh, multiple bus bars and each bus bar having a radial system, uh, lines connecting each other, when a fault happens at the end of the line uh, between uh, bus bar one and bus bar two, the trip time becomes the shortest. And this is to achieve uh, selectivity uh, because this fault will be seen by all the relays in bus bar two, three, four, and five. So I won't only relay two to trip, which is the faulty part. Uh, I set the time at relay two to be the lowest and become higher in the uh, uh, upstream uh, uh, bus bars. <clears throat> now, this uh, really can, uh, I would say, uh, the most basic idea about uh, overcurrent protection and uh, uh, how to operate and why we use time settings. And also we can change the pickup settings to achieve greater selectivity by enabling a second or instantaneous stage, as some people may call it. Uh, uh, to uh, apply uh, over current protection and achieve both selectivity and uh, uh, speed. <clears throat> now, our main topic today is testing. We're going to mainly uh, talk about uh, uh, testing, how we can test uh, this over current protection. I will not really go deeper into overcurrent itself and how we do the calculation and having inverse curves and all of that. This is just to give a quick introduction about it. But what I will mainly uh, talk about is testing. How can we test some connections and we'll run an examples on a setup that we have uh, today. Our session today, as I mentioned earlier, will be mainly a practical session, not a theoretical uh, one. Uh, I feel this is more, uh, 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 knowledge uh, sharing when you see the relay operating according to setting that you set and uh, how can we uh, verify that this settings is actually uh, there. So uh, when I talk about testing, what, what do I mean by testing a relay uh, protection in general, in a general uh, idea? Uh, the recommended tests that I would uh, usually do, I would say, I uh, would recommend is first to, before you start any injection or uh, checking any values or any, uh, any setting, I would uh, suggest to do a quick visual inspection and maybe hardware uh, check. And this visual inspection, you will uh, inspect the relay uh, having no, I would say, burning marks, having no, uh, uh, electrical issues, no uh, uh, alarms coming in it, uh, saying it is faulty, it is working in a healthy state. Now in numerical relays, there is always, I would say, a healthy indicator or watchdog uh, contact. And in commissioning stages in particular, I see this done, is doing a hardware check, where in the relay, you have uh, binary inputs, binary outputs, uh, you have, uh, the power supply circuitry, you can 
test these even without the secondary injection test kit. So it's just go to the relay. They allow you, uh, I would say, a test mode, the relay where you can close all the contacts and check them with a continuity uh, checker. Uh, check all the contacts are coming in when you uh, uh, close them. Also, the binary inputs in the relay, you can give them voltage uh, depending on what is the programmed voltage uh, available there. And uh, see is the relay reading this contact coming to it or reading this input being high or low uh, 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 coming to it uh, or not. Uh, now, this virtual inspection hard and hardware check, I would say it's more of a pre-test to make sure uh, the hardware uh, level, uh, also the power supply is uh, working when you give it uh, DC is, I would say, the initial stage of uh, uh, testing uh, relays. After doing all of that, I know my relay is working. I know that all my binary input and output are working correctly. Now I can start and bring my uh, secondary injection uh, test kit and start injecting values on the CT and VT inputs on my uh, relay. Uh, now, these uh, injections at the beginning, what we call is wiring check. I just inject values and read the values in case I have a numerical relay uh, from the measurement section there and make sure that all the measurement is correct within the, uh, I would say, acceptable tolerances. And we'll talk about tolerances in a moment. Uh, and also, uh, one quick trick, and I will show this in the practical demo, is when you're injecting or secondary injecting values using a single phase, how it will look like, and using a three phase uh, test kit will maybe look uh, differently, or I would say do the test differently uh, to make sure uh, not only that all the channels for the CTs and VTs are working correctly, but also the wiring. That's why we call it wiring check. The wiring that you have connected from the uh, test equipment into uh, the relay or IED is uh, correct as well. Once these two tests, I would say done, which are very basic and very simple, we can do and go to verify our protection setting and logic. The protection settings, depending on the protection function for overcurrent, for example, you will have I would say a uh, backup value or current set limit and a timing a value. This timing value could be a definite value, meaning it's constant throughout all uh, current ranges, or it could be, uh, I would say, a, a changing value and, or what you call inverse uh, characteristic uh, value. We can verify uh, both by checking them. There are a number of tests for uh, each, the current limit and the uh, a timing uh, a value. And also this, uh, by definition, when we configure our outputs from the protection element into a real context or relay contexts, we verify the logic that uh, the logic inside the relay is uh, tripping uh, correctly, uh, any conditions that we need to satisfy is available as well there. So most of the testing will be done in the third part where we test the protection setting and uh, logic verifi verification. But the first and the second part are the most important part uh, or one of the most important part to be done first and then going to protection and protection setting and logic verification. Now, when I have this uh, protection setting and logic verification, how, and I tested, I started the test, I injected, I got the contact or uh, I checked that the limit and showed me this actual value. How do I know this actual value that's been shown by the tester, I should accept it or I should uh, reject it or say that this test or this setting is failed, the relay has failed to uh, give me the seted value in it. <clears throat> so in order to do so, we need to have tolerances, or I would say uh, acceptable error tolerances. Now, these tolerances uh, come in, I would say, two forms or 
they look like two ways. You either have an absolute tolerance, which means it's, uh, I would say, uh, a fixed value, plus or minus this value, uh, uh, as a two acceptable tolerance, or a relative tolerance, percentage of the setting value itself. For uh, example, uh, I have this tolerances for my pickup current uh, limit as plus or minus 5% uh, or 60 milliamps, whichever is greater. If, for example, my pickup setting inside the relay is 0.5 amps, which is could be uh, usually set in the earth fault element. Now, this 0.5 amps could have an absolute tolerance uh, or as uh, relative tolerance uh, uh, to be uh, uh, 25 uh, milliamps. I, I, I calculate the relative tolerance uh, as 25 uh, milliamps. <laughs> or the absolute one could be 60 milliamps. Uh, I apologize about this. I apparently flipped the absolute and the relative one. Uh, so now I will take according to uh, my relay uh, recommendation, I take the greater one of them, the 60 milliamps, which is the absolute value. I will take it as my tolerance. So when I test this relay and the actual value came to me as 0.7 instead of 0.5. Now 0.7, that's, I would say, having 200 milliamps error. In this case, it is more than my, uh, uh, I would say, tolerances so are considered as fail, should be 0.5. If I test again, for example, and it showed me 0.5, uh, 1, and so you're having an additional 0.01 uh, uh, amps for the relay to actually pick up, that's still within my uh, tolerance uh, value. <clears throat> Another example, uh, to just to show you what's the difference or the difference between the percentage and the, or the relative and the absolute In case I have a different stage at two ampere. Now at two amps, now when I calculate my relative tolerance, which is 5% at my setting. So 5% of two amps is actually 100 milliamp. Now, 100 milliamp is greater than the absolute value, uh, 60 amp. 100 amp is greater than uh, the 60 amp. And this, uh, thus, the uh, uh, tolerances for me is not 60, it is uh, 100 uh, milliamp. So when I test this relay and any error showed more than 100 milliamp, I will consider it as a fail. I will take always the greater value. Now, when, where can I find these tolerances? Usually, they will be available in the technical specification of your uh, uh, relay. It will show for each element, like the overcurrent element, the air fault element, the under voltage, over voltage, frequency, whatever, how much is the tolerances for the pickup values, whether it's current, voltage, frequency, and the time, how much tolerances uh, for the time. How much is the relative or absolute, or sometimes only one of them uh, is showing, depending on the relay manufacturer, how they define the acceptable uh, error inside their uh, uh, relays. Now, this tolerance is very important for us when we are doing testing. It's important because it will uh, uh, give me the criteria to accept or reject this relay or consider it as uh, a failed or out of tolerance uh, uh, relay. We'll talk about some connections starting with a single phase connection. Example of this is our Sperker uh, 780. Uh, you will connect to one of the current channels and uh, inject. And maybe when you want to do a uh, testing for, I would say, pickup or timing values, you will connect to the contacts of the relay and uh, uh, take that contact as a trigger to stop the timer, for example, or to stop the 
or hold the current value when you're doing a pickup uh, test. So for single phase kits, you're only connecting to a single phase, sometimes only voltage or only current. You cannot connect uh, to both, for example, in this uh, spare care 780. So when you want to do the wiring check first, test, you will inject to the first phase, and then you remove the wiring, connect to the second phase, remove the wiring and connect to the third phase. Once you finish the current channels, you will do the same for the voltage channels using the voltage output in your uh, single phase uh, test kit, which is really, I would say, more of time consuming and also will take a lot of time for you connecting, disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting. So uh, for anyone who having a single phase kit, uh, oh, I would say it's been done for it. You you will just connect each phase uh, after uh, the other. However, in the three phase test kits, for example, in this example, we have the Sverker 900, uh, our three phase substation toolbox. <clears throat> you can connect to all three voltage channels and all three current channels, and not only take one contact like the Sverker 780, but take all, I would say, four contacts that can be used for trip contact, closed contact, start level, uh, or what we call pickup, and also alarm, in case you have alarm stages in your uh, uh, overcurrent or in your uh, relay. This could be very beneficial for anyone having, I would say, a motor uh, protection relay where they have alarms inside them rather than just uh, uh, operation or trips. <laughs> Additional thing you can connect to as well is uh, the circuit breaker indication where you can give the a relay a circuit breaker uh, uh, status uh, directly from the test kit itself. And a three phase connection or a three phase uh, test kit, now you have all the phases is connected. You want to make sure they are uh, connected properly as well. So it is advised to, during the wiring check test, the first test, is to inject different values on each phase. So on phase A, for the current channels, I inject 0.9 amps. In phase B, I inject 1 amps. In phase C, I inject 1.1 uh, amps. And for the voltage channels, respectively, uh, phase to neutral, I inject 50, uh, 55, and 60 for the three phases. This will give different values for each channel. Each channel should read this value uh, same as the injected uh, value. In case, for example, you have connected wrong, you swap between phase A and phase B uh, for the voltages or for the currents, uh, this uh, recommendation of using different current values will show if there is any problem with the connection or if you have swapped one phase uh, with the other. Some people might consider using the phase angle to check the uh, uh, connection is correct, but and sometimes, and this happens actually a lot, the test equipment phase angle arrangement is different than the phase angle arrangement inside the relay. They're using just using simply a different system to display the phase angle inside the relay from the one inside the uh, test equipment. So using changing the uh, values, it's make it easier rather than using the phase uh, angles. <laughs> Another uh, connection uh, uh, to our, I would say, Fridge 500 series or some countries called SMRT. Uh, it will be something similar to the uh, Sverker 900 where I will have three uh, voltages and three uh, currents going to my three CTs and three uh, VTs. I have uh, one thing to uh, highlight in the Fridge 500 or SMRT is that the neutrals are not shorted together for the voltages or for the current. So you need to hardwire them at the end to the neutral input inside my VT or uh, CT inputs in my relay. And also you have the start and a trip uh, contact connected as well. <clears throat> so this is just an examples of connections using single phase, some of the or single phase or three phase uh, test equipment. Now, 
if I want to do a testing, let's say I have a relay that have this setting and that have uh, these values. Uh, if I want to do testing, for example, I have an example here, uh, my comp B142, it's a feeder management relay. Uh, I have an overcurrent stage in it, active at one amps, and the timing setting for it is an inverse, standard inverse characteristic with 0.4 timing multiplier setting. And I have a second stage in it that if the current exceeds four amps, don't use the inverse, directly trip at 500 uh, milliseconds. Now, this uh, stage or this, uh, I would say, uh, phase over current is also complemented by an earth fault protection. Basically, it's similar to the phase over current, but instead of having uh, 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 measuring uh, on the main phases CTs, we are measuring from the neutral CT. Some others uh, uh, using the phase or earth fault as a calculated value rather than an actual measured. So this is really depends on the configuration that you have, but the most common is using an actual uh, measured neutral current. And the reason for that is because when you are calculating it from the three phases, and for whatever reason, one of the phases CT has an issue to it and the current dropped to zero or uh, having a problem in it, uh, the calculated value will depending on the three CTs. And these three CTs uh, being all working together. Uh, that will, I would say, uh, introduce some neutral current, in that earth fault element and could trip it by mistake. or uh, another thing is that when you have a high uh, fault uh, values on two phases or three phases, because of the errors inside the CTs or allowed error in the CTs, protection CTs in particular, uh, that allowed error could, I would say, or that errors at, at, at fault values like 20 or 15 or 10 times the rated current could introduce some earth fault uh, or I would say some neutral current because of these uh, errors and could operate the earth fault uh, protection. Having a dedicated earth fault CT makes the test uh, much, I would say the amplification much secure than uh, using a calculated one. Or for the calculated one, maybe you need to, I would say, increase the setting uh, compared to an actual measured uh, uh, fourth current input. Uh, for us today, we are using the fridge of 500, uh, 546 in particular, and it's connected to a MyCombi 142 relay, uh, having start contact connected to binary input 2, trip contact connected to binary input 1, uh, three voltage inputs, and three uh, current uh, inputs. Now, for the earth fault, I am making a loop at the end of the return path of the three currents and connecting it to the fourth uh, CT uh, of my uh, relay and then returning it back to my uh, test equipment. So for uh, testing, one of very important thing is to always have is to know what is your acceptable uh, tolerances. So now we will go to uh, testing starting first with I would say uh, a wiring check. I will check my relay and I will inject uh, some values to it. I'm sharing my camera now. You can see the camera, but I need to stop sharing my screen so the camera becomes bigger for everyone. Right. So I have my relay here. I have my fridge. Everything is connected. Hello everyone, I hope you all can see me. So this is the uh, Fridge 546 and I have my B142 relay here with me. Uh, if you are doing a testing in the substation or in a live environment, which is what usually is done for maintenance, 
you will not be connecting to the relay like I'm doing here, connecting directly to the back. You will be maybe using a test switch and a test plug to it, which really makes the connection much easier. Uh, and for that case, uh, maybe the connection is a little bit different. And the diagram I showed you earlier is just to give you an idea of how we're connecting uh, three currents, three VTs, and uh, uh, two binary input for testing. I don't really need more than this to uh, do any testing. Now, for injection, I have my uh, uh, test equipment here with me. And I am in the main page of my uh, fridge 500. So the first thing I would like to do is to verify that my connection is correct to my relay before starting verifying my setting. So I will inject 0.9 amps for phase A. And 1 amps for phase B. And 1.1 amps for phase C or L3, I3. And for the current voltages, I have 50, 55, and 60 uh, volt. I'll uh, uh, enable and make sure that my contacts are all uh, uh, configured. I don't need any outputs enabled. And I'm making sure that my contact number one, which is my trip, is configured as used as a trip to start or stop the injection. Now, to start the injection uh, in the fridge of 500, I can start using two methods. Can click on the three dots here to start the injection, or I can click on the start button, play button here to start the injection. The difference is that the three dots, it will manually inject and allow you to change the values here using the knob, uh, but it will not start the timer. But in the uh, play button, it will start uh, the timer uh, as well. So I don't need to start the timer now. I just want to inject some values and uh, check my wiring. So I'm going to click play. Check some values. And now I can uh, go to my relay and make sure in the measurement section, measurement one, I see the phase angles and the currents are all uh, coming correctly to me. Sorry, stop the injection. Inject again now. The magnitude for phase A is uh, 900 milliamps. Uh, Seems that it stopped the injection, no problem. My relay tripped. Let me go uh, lower values. Let's say 0.7, 8, and 0.9. And so I'm injecting 0.7 amps on phase A. Uh, which is basically showing me 700, around 700 milliamps. Stopped again. Now I'm injecting uh, 700 milliamps for phase A. And for phase B, it is showing me 800 milliamps. And uh, for phase C, uh, I'm seeing uh, 900 uh, milliamps uh, injected in the three phases. This means that I have my three connection to phase A, phase B, phase C is all uh, correct. I need to check now my voltages if they are connected or all in the correct sequence as well. So I'm not going to check the phase to phase. I'm going to check the phase to neutral voltages. So VAN showing me 49.94, basically like a 50 volt. There's only a few uh, millivolts difference between the values and injected and uh, measured values. For phase uh, ABN, I have uh, 54.98, like. 55 amps 
and for phase CN, I have uh, almost 60 uh, volt. So all my phases is connected uh, correctly and working uh, properly. So I can now stop the injection since I made sure all my connection is correct. Now, uh, one thing I can do uh, and uh, verify, I would say my start and my trip contact is by clicking on my start or my contact number one, and I can call it trip. Is it as trip? And contact number two as start. And use it as a start. So now the contact number one and contact number two, I want to verify the connection for them is correct as well. I'm connecting to the actual value. So how can I do that? I will inject values above my start, above one amps, and also later on increase it to more and check if the both contacts are coming or not. So I'm gonna click on phase A, include it in ramping. So yeah, remove it. I will increase my ramping rate by clicking on the ramping options. So I would say 0.1 as increment on only channel one. And you click the play button. And then check the current trees. Now you can maybe see my relay. Is it giving a start contact? Can you show both, Ali? Yes. Starting and I decrease it, stopping. Now, if I want to trip my relay, I will give, for example, two amps to it in phase A. And also use trip contact uh, to check the time as well. So I'm going to click play. I don't care what is the time is. I just care that it will trip after some times. So the contact trip contact came and it tripped for me after uh, 500 millisecond. So whether this tripping time is for what, we will see uh, later on, whether it's for my normal phase over current or my uh, 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 earth fault protection. We will see that once we start uh, testing uh, our phase over current or our earth uh, fault. So let's go back to our setting. I'll just share my screen again. So just to give a quick uh, uh, view of our setting, I have a phase over current at one amps. And that phase over current is having an IEC standard inverse characteristic. Uh, at 0.4 uh, timing multiplier setting. Uh, and it's also complemented by a second stage at four amps and at a time setting of 500 millisecond. When I want to test this, I have also my earth fault enabled for me. I'll just show you a quick trick that you can use with the fridge of 500 to, I would say, neglect or eliminate the effect of air fault uh, protection. One very important aspect for us is having tolerances. We need to uh, pay attention to them. So I have for my pickup plus or minus 5% of the sitting. And for my timing, I have plus minus 5% of my sitting or uh, plus and minus 50 millisecond, whichever is greater uh, of them. So going back to my camera now, Can see my camera now again. So testing the overcurrent uh, protection stages at one amps and the four amps. I can do all of that from the main uh, page that you can see in front of you. But I really would like to use the dedicated page for the overcurrent uh, protection testing. So I'm going to click on the test menus, this icon here, and go to 
my timing I, time for over current protection. So when I click on it, it should take me to the setting page uh, where in this setting page, I can define my uh, tolerances. I'm getting a feedback that the uh, screen is not visible very well. So I'm going to zoom in more. Apologize about that. This is not from my side. It's Webex not giving us, I would say, uh, a proper uh, resolution. I hope this is possible, more possible now for you. Let's save that even. All right. So, in my tolerances, you can see I have the tolerances available in the top here. I have my percentage tolerances uh, for the time as a percentage and as an absolute values at zero and at 0 0.05, which is basically 50 millisecond. And also I have tolerances for my uh, current is available here as a plus or minus uh, five. Uh, percent. If I have something else in my uh, relay, I will refer back to these uh, uh, or my technical specification. I will change the values for the percentages and the timing as well. One thing to mention is as well is that in overcurrent, there is, I would say, a drop out or drop off a setting that is usually 95% of your setting. Uh, where you can test at which value exactly the relay reset the timer, and it's called uh, the reset timer factor or reset uh, ratio. So for that as well, there is a tolerances. And in the case of you are using directional overcurrent, there is, I would say, a blinder tolerance in degrees, where you set how much in degrees the blinder uh, tolerances uh, should be. The other things here is more of a setting for the test itself, like how much pre-fault you want to inject at which value current and voltages, uh, how much is the maximum fault time or on time, whether you are injecting in the faulty parts or not faulty. Uh, these can be uh, defined here. And then if I click OK, it will take me to the element page where you can define number of elements, like two elements I'm having here. Uh, one is for the phase over current, and the second is for the earth fault. Now, in the phase over current, I'm defining the loops to be L1, L2, and L3. And uh, these uh, fault loops have my setting already implemented here. I have one amps with a 0.4 uh, TMS, and the curve is selected through the library in the top here, I have selected IEC. And in the IEC, I selected IEC curve A, or basically what we call standard inverse. If you want a different curve, there is a big library available to uh, select from. And for my second stage, it's defined here I, as I double greater. I have four amps at 0.5 second, and you can see the uh, unit here is in seconds. <laughs> if you have a directional element, you can define a directionality available for you. I have a directional element, but we will test that at a later stage. Here, we're only going to test the, the pickup and the timing. One very important feature, and I would say most important feature here, is when you are testing phase over current and you have earth fault enabled, there is a, I would say, a very nice feature called phase compensation. This feature, I'll zoom in a little more. Uh, this feature, phase compensation, what it will do is that when you are testing phase A, it will inject not only on phase A, uh, but will inject on also phase B and phase C at half the values of phase A, but in out of phase fashion, it will inject 180 degree out of it. This will make the test uh, or the neutral current, the summation of all of them equals to zero. 
uh, equals to uh, zero, and this will eliminate any neutral current, thus eliminating earth fault or uh, discriminating earth fault from uh, any operation. So I don't need to disable my earth fault. I can just test while it's enabled. So let's make your steps easier. So I click OK. And in the OK within here, uh, it showed me now the timing test. Uh, I can navigate all the tests that's available for me by clicking this icon, similar to the one on the main page. Then I have the face pickup timing instantaneous since I have an instantaneous stage and face directional. The other test will look at them uh, later on after the break. We'll just start with the face pickup. And the face pickup test showed me a table of the pickup and also a drop off uh, test. If I don't want to drop off test, I can disable it from the setting menu. One very important thing to select is that I need to make sure to select my start contact. So I click on the contact and I select here start, not the trip contact since it was programmed number one and by default it's number one. So I select the start contact and I click OK. This will only consider my start contact since I'm using it for the backup test. I can click play and say run all phases. Seems that my relay did not operate and uh, all my tests have failed. This could happen uh, sometimes. Uh, you just need to make sure uh, your setting is uh, put correctly in uh, the test kit. So I believe uh, the issue here came from, I would say, the uh, directional element. So in order to uh, make it easier and then test the directional element later on. I will just disable the directional element in the relay and then test, uh, enable it again later on in the test itself. I have tested this relay earlier and it was working fine. I think change some of the setting. So I have disabled the directional element. And I will disable it in my test kit as well. It's on directional and we'll run the test again. I hope the screen is clear for you. Uh, and I apologize about any, I would say, uh, low quality stream. Uh, it's really not, I, I have a really good camera here with me, but unfortunately, uh, the OBICs are not allowing a bandwidth for that camera. All the tests are best, and I can see the uh, currents uh, for the pickup, picked up at, I would say, exactly one amps, which either me, the test is, 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 is very, I would say, very nice, very, very good, or that maybe the step I'm using, it's, uh, I would say, a little bit big that it is starting near the one always. <clears throat> but the very nice thing or showing the nice thing is that my uh, drop out is dropping at 0.94, which is pretty close to 0.95, but it's still uh, a very nice uh, thing to have. So this is the backup test, and now we'll start doing the timing test and see how does that look like. 
So I'm going to click on the timing. So I click the tests, paste timing. And in the timing test, it showed me now the characteristic curve and the instantaneous one. I can uh, see the points or the three points defined at two times my uh, setting and three times and five times. If I would like to adjust them a little bit, so I'm going to make them at two times. I'll leave it this one at two times. I'll make another one at 2.5 times. Maybe three times. And the last one, I will make it at 4.5 times my value. Don't put a timing value directly on top of your pickup value. For the second stage, we have it at 4 amps. So putting one there should give you either before or after. So don't put one when you are testing timing. Always put above your pickup values. And I'll just for sake of it, I will add a 5 amps value as well. You can basically just click and add values easily. I will make sure my contact selected for the trip one or the start. And start by testing, let's say, base A. Now I'm already started. So, I tested only phase A. The values below 4 amps, they all came uh, correctly at each time I increase the current, the value of the uh, time uh, decrease, which is what I expected. And also show for showing me for each value how much is the minimum and maximum time should be. For uh, 2 amps, it was the maximum time should be 4.2. Uh, according to the setting, I have either 2% uh, or 5% or plus minus 50. So it's calculated what is the tolerance and directly put it there. Uh, as you can see here, the trip time for the first uh, uh, point was 4.035. So there is a theoretical one, I believe, to be 4 uh, seconds exactly, according to uh, the calculation of that. Uh, uh, standard inverse uh, equation, but the error showed me only 35 millisecond additionally, which is something very, very, I would say, uh, uh, nice, uh, showing me very uh, low uh, error. <clears throat> For the second points and the third point as well, everything is okay. But the fourth point showed me a value of uh, 0.552. And the maximum time allowable is 0.55. Uh, the setting is, for your information, is 0.5, 500 milliseconds. But the time shown here, it is as a maximum time to be 550 milliseconds. So we only exceeded that limit by, I would say, 2 milliseconds. So it should be acceptable uh, for us. But I can, I would say, repeat that shot only by clicking here and run for only phase A. Now, uh, they really have, I would say, tripped a more correct way and uh, show me 544, which is below my maximum uh, time. As you can see, the error as a percentage is, uh, I would say, very high, like 8%. And if you remember, we put the tolerance as maximum 5%, but in this case, my absolute error, the 50 millisecond is greater than the 5%. So we took the, the 50 uh, millisecond as uh, our acceptable error, rather than the, I would say the five uh, uh, millisecond percentage. So I can now continue testing phase B and phase C.
So again, the fourth button, third, the fourth that you also, so I can just repeat it, run again, or L2. Maybe I just need to, wow, almost at five, uh, four, eight millisecond, like two millisecond below the maximum time. Very nice. So I can do the last point. First phase. Again, always the fourth point is kneeling repeating. Run four of the three. Yeah, correctly. I believe having successor shots uh, on this relay, uh, maybe we need to increase, I would say, a brief hold time or something like that to uh, eliminate this condition from happening. So now I have tested all and all uh, uh, passed. I have done the pickup and the timing for my phase over current. Uh, now I can do the pickup for the second stage. Since I already tested the time for the second stage, I will just do the pickup for it. So I click here, I click on the phase instantaneous. The phase instantaneous, it is doing pulse ramping. And uh, I need to make sure that I'm using the trip contact. So I'm going to click play, and I have the trip contact. I'm going to click play to all phases. Just to show you what I mean by that, as you will see, the relay is starting but not operating. You can see the relay is this. Each time starting but not operating, starting but not operating because it's pulsing the value. Once it tripped, it will take the value. So already finished phase A. Uh, let's zoom in on the page and see what the value that we got. That is, I would say, wow, exactly four amps. Maybe the step is a little bit much higher. All right, phase B is four amps and 27 milliamp additionally, which is still within our maximum uh, limit. That's very nice. Right. So we got now our phase instantaneous, the pickup for the three phases. Uh, only phase B showed a little bit higher error at uh, four and 27 uh, milliamps additional error. So this, now we have tested the phase over current pickup for both stage one and stage two, and also timing for stage one and stage two as well. Now we will do the air fault uh, protection, and after that we'll take a quick break. Uh, uh, so for the air fault protection, let's go back to our setting. So my air fault setting is uh, at the pickup value is at 0.2 amps or 200 milliampere, and it is a definite time that's operate at 500 milliseconds. Uh, some people might add, I would say, uh, 
second stage as well, but one stage here is available. Uh, if you add a, a second stage, this sequence will be uh, similar to do what to phase over current uh, as well. So now to test that, I will go back to my camera, go back to my setting, and click on my earth fault element. My earth fault uh, element, I have set only earth, or some people might have it as N neutral, depending on the overlay that you have selected in the Fraser. And that uh, earth is set at 0.2 amps and 0.5 second or 500 millisecond for a definite time curve. So now I can. Uh, click OK. One thing to, very importantly uh, to set is to make sure that you are not using phase compensation. Click OK. And for that, I click on the tests. Then I have my earth fault pickup and timing. So I'm going to click earth fault pickup. Make sure I'm using my start contact and I click play. But the actual value to be at almost exactly 200 milliamps, which is uh, very nice. As you can see here, the maximum and minimum values are very, very niche and uh, uh, very, I would say, close to my uh, setting value, which is basically just plus or minus a five a percent. Now, earth for timing. And in earth fault timing, I have three shots since I have only one stage. Uh, I I can just make sure I'm using my trip contact and I click play. Right. All right, uh, seems that uh, all my test shots have came uh, best. Uh, my timings are having an errors of, I would say, 20 to 30 millisecond additional timing, which is uh, expected because the relay does not, I would say, uh, trip or does not pick up and start the timer after, I would say, only maybe one cycle or cycle and a half uh, of the waveform. So additional 20 to 30 milliseconds is expected in any protection. Even if you put the timing setting to zero, still still have that additional uh, time. That will be all for the first session of this uh, training. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Uh, for, I would say, uh, 10 minutes. And start again with you at 12, uh, exactly, 12 uh, p.m. our time, maybe uh, different for everyone, but you'll start after, I would say, 10 minutes. So see you after 10 minutes. And during that, we'll answer any question that you might have.
Hello everyone, and I hope uh, everyone is back with us right now. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see any questions being asked, so I presume uh, I would say everyone is available for uh, with us, or uh, everyone is with us on board, knowing about this. Uh, next, the next session will talk about I would say. Directional overcurrent. Basically, uh, why we need directional overcurrent and what is the requirement we need to have uh, uh, in our uh, protection system configuration to be able to apply overcurrent and how the direction is actually decided. The concept of reference voltage. What uh, it's the reference voltage and how it's been selected and how uh, uh, can then we test this reference voltage. So directional overcurrent is similar to the normal overcurrent, but the only thing uh, addition to it is having a directional element. We'll see how the directional element is working and how we can test it. So the first thing, why do we need directional overcurrent? I have a quick example of having two parallel lines. Okay, so I have a two parallel lines and these uh, two parallel lines are uh, using, I would say, uh, uh, an overcurrent to protection to protect them. In case of a fault happen on line two, for example, the current fed will be from both uh, sides for selectivity reasons and for a speed. There was, I would say, a uh, uh, a discrimination time between bus A and bus B for each line for relay 3 and relay 4 are stripping at 0.1 second and relay 1 and relay 2 on bus bar A are stripping on 0.4 a second. In this case, what will happen is that because I have non-directional overcurrent, both lines will be de-energized because relay 3 and relay 4, both of them, they will operate because both of them having the same timing setting. Now, how can I, I would say, uh, overcome this issue, having my line one, which is healthy and has no problem being tripping, I can apply, I would say, or I would call it a directional overcurrent for specifically for relay three and relay four. For relay three and relay four, when the same fault happens again, and I have a directional element on relay three that will only operate if the current is flowing into line one, not out of line uh, one into bus bar B. Then relay three will not operate and only the faulty part, which is line two, will be operated because the current are flowing through the line to relay four and relay uh, two. So this is a quick example of why we need direction over the current and how can it benefit us. Uh, uh, and for example, parallel line arrangement. There are other benefits, for example, to in uh, uh, what we call ring type uh, or ring arrangement. Uh, having a direction over current is uh, very, very much likely to be used uh, there, especially if that ring is always connected from both a side the normally open point is closed in there. <clears throat> so, how in principle does the directional element works? So, the current, when it flows through the element, you have your circuit breaker, your CT, and your VT uh, connected. It will flow normal load current. will have, I would say, a slightly lag, lagging angle to the voltage, which is, I would say, around 10, maybe 15 degree, or even less, much less than that, and usually a resistive load indicating power flowing through uh, your line. Now, this lag and lead relationship between the voltages and the current, we can use it to indicate is the current going in the forward direction or in the reverse uh, direction? 
Now, but we need to know what angles to set. Uh, what the limit of these angles is. That's why when a fault happens, uh, the fault angle in the forward direction when the fault is in front of you, or front of the CT and VT connection, the angles become, I would say, around from 60 to maybe 80 or something like that, uh, degree lagging from the voltage. The reason for that is because the lines are purely or mostly inductive parts, and that will contribute to this phase angle uh, shift. Now, to do this uh, uh, angle arrangements, you have to have a reference. Usually or always, the reference to use is voltages. So I need a voltage to use it as a reference. And uh, this voltage, when I use it as a reference for the current to know it's in the forward direction or in the reverse direction, I need to know how that, I would say, a reference work. And for doing so, the most, I would say, stable quantity that I can depend on uh, is the voltage. Yes, it, it will drop down during a fault, but I still can depending on it during that uh, conditions. So how can I uh, uh, detect the direction from this uh, reference angle? Let's say I have a three-phase system, V1, V2, V3, it's a balanced three-phase system. If a fault happen, I know that the uh, fault angle now, because it's mostly inductive, will be having this uh, shape or, or, or an angle uh, usually from 60 to 90 uh, degree. So I need to set a characteristic align with that angle or aligned or in the region of that 60 to 30. So I can call this characteristic or angle to be my, or usually historically was called maximum torque angle. Some relays now call it characteristic angle only. Uh, uh, to be uh, aligned with the expected fault uh, uh, duration, uh, uh, direction. Now, since I align this angle, from this angle, I can open a blinder or area indicating what is forward, which is in, in, in below here, and what is uh, reverse, which is in the uh, back direction uh, of my blinder. Now, this uh, angle is depending now on my reference voltage, because whenever I talk about angles, I have to have a reference. Now, it is not recommended to use the same 40 volt voltage input as your uh, reference, because if a fault happened, uh, let's say a single phase fault happened, my angle or my voltage will start to drop if that fault is exactly near the VT itself, the voltage will be almost zero. So I cannot get a, a reliable uh, values, thus I can't get a reliable angle from it. That's why it is uh, always recommended to use different reference for uh, the faulty phases. So for phase A, I will use the phase-to-phase -phase voltage of phase B and C, or for I1, I will use the voltage for I2 and I3. Nothing uh, related to V1 itself. For I2, respectively, I'll use for three and one, and for I3, I'll use uh, one to two. And when I have face-to-face -face faults, I will only use the healthy uh, uh, voltages like V3, V1, and V2. So if I have uh, my system like this for phase to neutrals and for my phase to phase will be something like this. And let's say I want to uh, create an angle for I1, an I1 fault. Uh, I will choose an MTA angle or characteristic angle to be near that value using my reference as V23. And then uh, selecting my, I would say a blinder angle. So anything inside uh, this green area green area would considered as forward current and anything 
uh, not in it will consider the reverse. You have only forward or uh, reverse. And respectively, the areas for phase two and phase three for I2 and I3 will be something uh, like this. It's just shifted 120 degree. Now, this is how I would say it's defined for directional overcurrent. You have a blinder that's opened based on a characteristic angle. And that blinder is uh, having, I would say, a minimum and a maximum angle to it. So anything between these two angles uh, will be considered as forward direction. If your relay is seated as forward and the value of the current is above the pickup value, the element will start operating. And that start, depending on the time setting that you have, you will get the trip or, or uh, no trip functionality. <clears throat> so when I want to test, back to testing again, uh, if I tested known direction over current, we already done that, we test the pickup and we test the timing, the current limit and the time delay. Now, for directional overcurrent, you will still do the same tests for the pickup and timing. But the thing is that you need to satisfy the directional element condition. You need to make sure that, the, that you're injecting voltage, just to give a reference, and the phase angle of the current is in the uh, direction seated in your element. So it should be, uh, I would say, uh, uh, inside your uh, blinder for the uh, phase angle of the current for any phase angle or any voltage you can or you have to uh, do this and if you want to test the directional element itself you can test it by testing the maximum and minimum angle by changing the phase angle of the current to see at which angle exactly it will I would say uh, 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 operate the uh, relay. And to do so, it's basically you get your test current, you inject a value above your uh, pickup, and you will start moving that current phase angle inside your uh, uh, blinder uh, zone for the max angle and also for the minimum uh, angle. Now, in my example here, I have the uh, B142 that is already set with the same values, but I added now the uh, setting for the angles itself. So I have direction forward, that is in the forward direction, and I have my characteristic angle, or what's it called, RCA relay characteristic angle, or historically, historically called maximum torque angle MTA because in new, new electromechanical relay it was operating based on torque and the torque only get maximum at this uh, angle itself so uh, the reference voltages as I mentioned earlier for phase A we are using phase 2 3 phase B we are using phase 3 1 and phase C or or phase 3 I'm using uh, V 1 uh, 2 Basically, the healthy voltages, I'm using it for the faulty phase, faulty phase current. And my blinder in this relay is plus and minus 90 degree, because there are some other relays that have, say, different blinders. They have sometimes 85 or 80. Some relays maybe allow you to change that uh, uh, to see how that blinder works. So now, if I want to test this uh, again, in the setting page, I have the directional element uh, setting on the bottom right. Now, in the phase over current, I can just select my reference first to be phase to phase and select the angle for it is to be minus 90 degree because this minus 90 degree will be from the zero V1 uh, angle reference. And once you select this reference voltage, which is very important to select, uh, you can then select what is your MTA, what is your uh, blinder angle. So this is to a 270 or uh, minus 90 degree. 
I can uh, uh, select now my MTA. It's at 45 degrees, so I can set 45. Uh, my blinder is opening plus or minus 90, so I can put 90 to make sure of that. And I can set the value of the voltage, the magnitude, and what is the step that I want the phase angle to change in. These are uh, four test uh, uh, values. So the step, if you put it too low, it will take longer time to do the test, but it will give you a higher accuracy. If you put it too high, it will uh, give you a low time of test, but it will, I would say, uh, not give you that, uh, I would say, required accuracy for the test itself. So choose what uh, uh, you want. Just make sure that the voltage magnitude value, the 30 volt, is above, I would say, a certain limit because some relays have a minimum voltage that they look at. If it's below that, it will block or will not look at the voltage as a reference and maybe work as a non-directional element. So let's go back to our setting and check the... So I changed the camera now, uh, the camera setting, it should now look uh, much better than before. Uh, but unfortunately, with that change, now uh, we have a problem of being a little bit, I would say, laggy or having low from frame per uh, second rate. So you might see me, I would say, uh, more cutting, but now the picture will be smooth when it's static. So I come back to my settings. Go to back to my face. In my face, I have the directional element here. I'm gonna select my reference voltage as I mentioned as face to face. And the value for it is 30 volt. Now the angle is minus 90 or 270. Uh, both of them uh, will work, and my RCA is 45 degree. The blinder itself uh, is 90 degree, and the step I put it 0.5 to make just the test go a little bit uh, faster for each phase. If your CT is swapped, this will affect directionality. You can change that from by clicking this icon to change the direction of the uh, CT. So I click OK and get to my phase directional element. I have two two tests as a directional element where it will test the minimum and maximum angle or as a shots where it will just make a shot below and after. So I'm going to do the full maximum and minimum directional angle test. I'll make sure I'm selecting my start contact. I'll click on the contact, oh, sorry. Click on the contact, make sure it is on the start. Contact since I don't need the backup, I just want it to start checking that it went into the forward uh, region. Look OK. And then I will click play for all phases. Start now rounding up the, so I can click here. Already got the phased angle. So it's changing for each phase and measuring the each maximum and minimum angles. I hope now all the values are clear for you. Uh, you can see now the angle, the actual angle for each one. And uh, what is the, I would say, minimum and maximum angle for each. Uh, showing you here the all at 45 degree, which is the MTA 
with each respective uh, phase. And also showing you the setting value, what is the actual setting value and what is the actual angle itself in the 360 uh, plane uh, itself. Because remember, this actual angle is reference from my reference voltage, which is the phase to phase that we selected 90. But this average angle is from the zero here. So now this is the directional uh, element uh, testing for, I would say, the uh, uh, phase over current. Uh, what about the air fault? Uh, uh, do I have a directional element for the air fault? Yes, I do. And we can uh, test it as well. So going back to the setting, back to my uh, presentation. Now, for uh, the earth fault, uh, 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 directional earth fault protection, there are many methods of applying directional earth fault in, in some relays. Some relays using uh, something not like this, not using a, a polarizing voltage, they are using watt metric uh, method. We will not discuss that, we'll just discuss the uh, polarizing voltage uh, method where we have a voltage uh, as a reference and uh, a neutral current uh, uh, as a reference to it. So uh, in this relay, I have the setting for the polarizing voltage using the zero sequence voltage. Now, the zero sequence voltage measured in this relay, it is uh, considered as 180 degree from uh, the reference voltage, which is V1 uh, to be at 180 degree from it. This polarizing voltage, I have to select it uh, in my test equipment and also uh, select the RCA angle for it, which is minus 45 degree. I already have tested the pickup and uh, the timing before. I will just have to select the RCA and uh, the polarizing voltage and check the measurement, uh, how it will, would, look, would look like. So going back to my camera, And now I'll select my earth fault element. And in my earth fault element, I select the direction to be forward. My RCA angle, I put it as minus 45. But the thing here is that my reference voltage became now V0. I have three selections. VA, VN, phase to neutral, phase to phase, or V0. I selected V0. And I set that angle for that reference voltage to be 180 uh, degree. Now, this reference voltage is uh, uh, having also, or, or this element having also a 90 degree element uh, blinder uh, that we can uh, test as well. So I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna go to my earth fault directional element. And make sure again that I'm using my start contact. The start, okay. Make a little play. You can see the blinder is on the top there. So. It is only one uh, uh, phase or one element, so it is in the A element. I got my angles to be somewhat, not 45 degree exactly, but minus 45 point, uh, 45 degree. And I can click zoom in, click on it to zoom in, and I see my blinder and my two shots on the top and one on the bottom as well. So this is directional over current. I know that some people might, who have difficulty testing, I, I just to suggest to you to put your polarizing voltage to be 180 degree or just to swap the leads between the red and black one for the voltage itself that will make it 180 as well. And it should work uh, fine uh, for you. So 
This is the directional overcurrent. Uh, we'll be taking any questions that you might have. Uh, right now as well. Uh, and also taking another break uh, for, I would say, 10 minutes and then starting with the uh, breaker failure uh, uh, testing. It seems that uh, we don't have any questions. Uh, I hope everything is uh, well understood by you all, guys. Uh, if anyone have any questions, please don't feel shy to ask them in the Q&A. Uh, it will be my pleasure uh, or our pleasure to provide answer for this question for you. Thank you all for joining us, though.
Hello everyone and welcome back again. We'll continue now with the last part of this session today. It's about breaker uh, failure protection. Basically, we'll know a little bit about breaker failure, how does it operate and uh, how can we test the breaker failure uh, in a very, I would say, quick and Uh, session. So, the breaker failure protection that is uh, activated only, started only when you have a trip command already being outputted. So, when a fault happen, for example, between uh, bus part B and C, uh, between relay three and four, and uh, looking from point to B or bus bar B point of view, a trip will be giving to this breaker uh, three after maybe a, a delayed trip or an instantaneous one, really depend on the fault type, current, and also the setting value is. So in the case that this trip has been given to the breaker and the breaker failed to clear this fault, it, uh, it did not operate correctly, basically. It, uh, uh, it has a mechanical jam or it has something in it. So in this case, we still need to clear that fault. So for that, we will operate the other upstream and maybe the whole bus bar uh, breakers uh, using the breaker failure protection. So breaker number two, five, and seven all will be operated to compensate for the failure in breaker number three. This uh, element, the breaker failure elements, has two components for it to work correctly. It has a timer that will start after the uh, uh, trip command has been uh, issued to the breaker and has a current detector. This current detector is uh, very important. That's why I will start uh, with it first. The current detector detects if there is a current flowing through the breaker after the trip command has been issued uh, and it will uh, pick up for the minimum any any minimum uh, fault values it's usually set uh, above or or i'd say below even normal load currents for any uh, uh, low values <clears throat> and if it's also can be set not only for phase currents, but also for neutral currents. Uh, but make sure that it is above unbalanced values, because sometimes you have unbalanced values and they create some offset. Now, this current detector are used uh, when the protection that's been operated is current based protection, like over current distance differential. But if there is a non current operation, like voltage protection under voltage over voltage or frequency protection like under frequency over frequency or other type of protection that did not utilize current at all maybe uh, the current director functionality can be utilized or achieved by using the auxiliary contact the 52a uh, specifically <clears throat> now the basic scheme for a breaker uh, failure uh, function you will have the BFI is the initiation of the breaker failure which is usually or uh, always related to any trip command coming from the relay itself or coming from an external trip uh, the initiation for the breaker failure and the 50 BF element which is the under uh, I would say current uh, element both of them uh, need to be available uh, to, I would say, operate the breaker failure, to uh, not, not, not reset the breaker uh, failure. Now, the timing for the breaker failure element depends on number of things. See, when I want to uh, make sure that my breaker did not actually operate, I have to give it time. So when a fault happened, uh, and that fault uh, 
or that protective relay have operated, it should trip command. I need to give it time uh, for the breaker to interrupt and also time for the current detector to reset. And uh, this is a very important stage that the current detector reset my timer if the breaker has operated. And also add a margin, safety margin, let's say uh, 50 millisecond. After that, I can, uh, I would say, operate the breaker failure uh, protection. Otherwise, uh, if I operate it prematurely or before this, it could result in it tripping the whole bus bar while my breaker has operated it correctly, meaning I had a mal operation. So I need to give it time. Now, if I considered my breaker interruption time, I have an old breaker to be, let's say, 50 millisecond, for example. And my current director uh, reset time uh, to be a 50 millisecond, which is our very typical values available in the site. I can add another 50 millisecond as a margin or a safety margin time. And by total adding all of these three together, I can sit and say that my breaker failure timer should be 150 millisecond, for example. In our example, we are using this timer. And this is just to give you why uh, we are using uh, these uh, uh, timer for that. Now, one thing to know is when I consider a, a circuit breaker failure, I need to know what do I, what I mean by a failure in the circuit breaker. The first failure is mean that it failed to completely uh, trip or operate. It, it didn't move at all. This could be because the uh, uh, Tripping circuit or the tripping coil uh, or open coil is did not get energized for some reason. There is a block in it or something like that. Or could be a short circuit inside a trip coil. It was energized, but it was not energized enough or powerful enough to release the breaker uh, mechanism. Or there is a mechanical problem with the breaker. The spring was not charged enough or it was loose or something wrong mechanically with the mechanism itself that it did not operate correctly. This what we consider as a complete failure, it didn't operate at all. Now, there is a different mode of failure that through that the breaker has operated, it start moving to open the contact, but for some reason, the fault did not extinguished. It was still existing even after the holes have been uh, uh, opened, the current still flows. That's why the current detector element is very important in this case. Maybe because of a mechanical problem, it did not operate, opened fully, it was only open for a, I would say, short gap, or uh, because of a dielectric problem. It opened, but the dielectric inside was not very well or was not maintained uh, correctly and uh, that the current still continued uh, to flow through the dielectric. In any case of this, it is very important to see if the current is still flowing or not after issuing the trip contact or uh, issuing the trip a command and the circuit has operated. That's why the current detector stage or element is very important when you are talking about uh, circuit breaker uh, failure protection. This is a, a scheme of what I need. Uh, I can, uh, in case the, uh, the fault current is very minimum, it's, I would say, below my current director element, I can use not only the current element itself, the 50 BF, 50 uh, breaker failure element, but I can use also the contact as my condition to indicate the breaker has opened. This is very important uh, to always reset the breaker failure protection when the breaker has opened. So I can use not only the current detector to detect that, but also the status of the breaker 52A uh, or 52B uh, uh, contacts.
Now, testing the breakers or uh, testing the elements. Uh, I have my connection here with me. I have uh, the same relay, my combi 142. Uh, I, I connected all the my three CTs and three VTs. And I used binary input three that's connected to the contact, which is configured to operate it for breaker failure timer one. Now in breaker failure, there could be multiple stages, not only one stage. Uh, scheme for that, for example, in many breakers, there is two tripping coils. Uh, you could do a breaker failure stage one that will re-trip the breaker, basically using a second coil instead of the first one. Or uh, a second stage that it will trip the whole uh, bus bar. Or instead of all of that, I can select only one stage that will immediately just trip the whole bus bar. I don't just re-trip the circuit uh, breaker. Now, the element I'm having inside my Micom B142 relay is uh, configured at 150 millisecond. And uh, the uh, undercurrent element that the current director I'm using is configured at uh, 50 milliamps. If the current drop to less than 50 milliamps, the circuit breaker failure protection will be resetted. So it will not work uh, when my current seen by my uh, uh, relay is less than uh, 50 milliamps. So this undercurrent, it's going to the breaker failure itself and resetting it when the value becomes less than a 50 milliamp. So when I want to do a testing for this, I will test first the breaker failure timer. I will give a, 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 a initiation to my uh, breaker. I will give a contact back binary output to my uh, relay. Uh, I should have drawn that in the uh, diagram here. And this contact will, I would say, force breaker failure to initiate. It's like a, an external trip. Let me draw that uh, very quickly for you. So this is B out. One. It's going to, I would say, external trip. Let's change the color. This is external trip binary input in my relay. So I'm going to give a binary output to my relay, telling it that you get a trip command coming externally, or I can even generate that from internally directly in the relay, but this is an easier way. In this case, uh, my trip command will uh, initiate a breaker failure, comes BFI. And then I just need to, if I want to test the time, I will just set the undercurrent value above the set limit. So it does not reset. Uh, and see how much time I got. It's 150 millisecond or not. Uh, and then I will test the undercurrent element itself by giving the initiation and increasing the current until I get my uh, pickup uh, value for the undercurrent element. So let's start by doing that. I will open my camera. See my camera correctly, very nice. So the binary output configured, so I can access it. So I'm going to do all of these tests from the main page itself. So I'm using binary input three as my uh, contact. I call this B if okay. Okay. So now my contact number three 
it's called PF, and I have it connected into my uh, contact that's configured inside the relay. My outputs from the fridge or the SMRT is called external trip. I will close this contact, meaning I am giving a command back to my uh, relay that telling it initiate breaker failure. So I'll give a minimum current, or I say uh, a current above my undercurrent, let's say 0.1 in all phases. Because my undercurrent element is 0.5. Now I'll start the test to test the timing for the breaker failure element. So now uh, timing becomes so fast. I hope you saw that. Uh, showing me 0 0.188 amps. Basically, that's uh, the time that the relay took to initiate the breaker failure stage one. Now, this time it's not exactly 150 millisecond, but according to our tolerance, which is at plus or minus 50 millisecond, it's still within tolerance. So uh, I shall accept that. I can run the test again just to see that. Now become one, one millisecond less. Right. So, and also uh, uh, there is an alarm on my relay. Also, there is an alarm on my relay showing me that the breaker failure has been operated. Uh, let me show. Click here, oh, go back. Click here, CB fail alarm. Means the CB failure has operated inside the relay as well. So I can reset that alarm, <clears throat> no problem. So now I have tested the timing. I got the timing. I can just click here and add that result to the report and call this test to be C. E if time now I can do the minimum pickup or the undercurrent pickup test. Now the undercurrent pickup test uh I will inject values below my uh, uh undercurrent element for each phase and test how much is the actual current that this element will actually operate on. So I'm going to make now zero currents for all three phases. While still giving the initiation command, my contact is still closed here. So I'm going to click eject. Just make the increment a little bit lower. Eject. Now I'm injecting current, injecting and giving initiation command back to my relay, but it's not giving me any breaker failure contact because the current, because it's seeing that the current has uh, actually been resetted. So I'm going to increase current until the, the 50 millisecond or 50 milliamp should operate. Just about the step speech that the channels has been disabled on second. Okay, it came now at 52 millisecond uh, as my contact. So for phase A, uh, it was operated at 52 uh, millisecond. Uh, milliamps, sorry about that. Uh, now I can do the same thing for phase B and phase C. Zero for all. Remove this from round bank and include this in round bank. Make sure that this is tearing off all channels. And I'll make this zero four directly.
All right. Came and it operated at 0.58. My contact has closed. Now I can test the third phase. Make it zero. Oh. And include this in ramping. Operate the test. All right, came at 0.55 amps, 0 0.055 at 55 milliseconds. So I can see whenever I get the value of my current detector above my limit, it will operate the breaker failure element. Uh, because I am not only waiting for my external trip to come, but also waiting for my current uh, to initiate the breaker uh, failure. So that's it for us today. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, hope we have a few questions to answer them uh, for you. just to receive any questions from you if there are any um there's um let me remind you there is a survey at the end of this webinar where you can leave your feedback um regarding the webinar or request a demo so please um, take the time to fill up the form and i wish you a, ha a great day and please note that all recordings will be shared within the next few days thank you everyone Hello, everyone. It seems that uh, we have no questions. Uh, 
I hope everything is clear. And I have a saying, if there is uh, no questions, probably means everyone is understanding everything or no one understanding anything at all. So I hope it's not the second case. Uh, it's been my pleasure uh, being here with you today. And uh, there is my email address, ali.hussein at migar.com. In case you have any questions, any inquiry, uh, you want a technical demo or any uh, uh, sales inquiry, please feel free to email me for that. Uh, we will be ending this session uh, right now. Please feel free to uh, fill in the feedback form. Uh, and remember, if you have any questions, there is my email. Send that to me. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a nice and wonderful day.